answer will soon be indelibly inscribed on Lord Stanley's cup. The following is a special presentation of CBC Sports. Tonight on Stanley Cup Preview, we look back to past cups and the stories of the 88-89 season. Ron McLean and Don Cherry team up for some lively predictions. We'll rekindle Stanley Cup memories and hear from six men who may make the difference. All this and much more tonight on Stanley Cup Preview 89. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our show. We are just one day away from the start of the 1989 Stanley Cup playoffs and very happy to be presenting our first playoff preview from CBC Sports as we are going to set the stage tonight for hockey's most exciting season. But first of all, let's take a glimpse back to some of the players and some of the stories that made headlines since the Stanley Cup was last won. For the benefit of Wayne Gretzky, my new wife, and our expected child in the new year, that it would be beneficial for everyone involved to let, let me play with the Los Angeles Kings. Yes, the familiar sight of Wayne Gretzky in Oilers Blue and Orange was now a thing of the past, and the thought was enough to move even the great one to tears. Promise mess I wouldn't do this. <laughs> But life continues, and as Gretzky christened the new King's colors, it was simply a matter of a change of address for the human highlight package. Yes, Wayne could still weave his magic on the West Coast, just as he had done in Edmonton. And now he had a new gang of teammates to inspire, such as Bernie Nichols, who moved into the realm of the NHL elite with a 70-goal season. In New York City, another superstar emerged in a new uniform, Guy Lafleur shrugging off three seasons of retirement, displaying the familiar scoring touch. On the downside this season, John Ferguson, Winnipeg general manager, watched from on high as his Jets fell to the Smythe division basement. And their performances proved too tough for even Ferguson to bear watching. The ex-Montreal enforcer was asked to leave. Coaches felt the sting, too. The Islanders hitting rock bottom, Terry Simpson departed. As did volatile John Brophy, who couldn't figure the ups and downs of the Maple Leafs. Dan Maloney, who did understand the Leafs and left, was handed a pink slip in Winnipeg, while a kidney tumor forced Ron LaPointe to give up the reins in Quebec City. The New York Rangers uncovered a couple of gems in defenseman Brian Leach and forward Tony Granato, practically in their own backyard. Former members of the U.S. Olympic team, the two sharpshooters make the Rangers Patrick Division contenders in the playoffs, and they occupied the media limelight in the Calder Trophy race as the league's outstanding rookies. In Detroit, Bob Proberg would fight an alcohol problem to stay on the ice, but wound up in court on cocaine trafficking charges in March, effectively ending his career. Trade rumors swirled, then materialized for Buffalo goalie Tom Barrasso, as Barrasso became a Pittsburgh Penguin while Kelly Rudy rebounded from his trials as a New York Islander by taking his place in the sun as a member of the suddenly respectable Los Angeles Kings. Dino Cicerelli was not providing the answer in Minnesota. He would carry his sharpshooting to Washington, much to the initial chagrin of Caps veteran Mike Gartner, who would quickly gather himself and warm to his future in Minnesota. Another player who changed teams this spring, goaltender Clint Malarchuk, faced the most harrowing experience of his life. A collision causing a six-inch gash and a partially severed jugular vein. Fortunately, he survived the trauma and is back in uniform. You know, you shouldn't worry about little things in life. These kids are fighting every day, and, uh, and when you come close, it's scary. And then last Saturday, the New York Rangers surprised everyone firing coach Michelle Bergeron. And up next, we'll hear from the men who make the difference, including Wayne Gretzky. And we'll check out that Adams division where Montreal reigns as the authority figure. Stanley Cup Preview 89 brought to you by Molson Export. Nothing halfway about it. X says it all. By Ford of Canada, where quality is more than a commitment, quality is job one and by Essel retailers and agents across Canada.
across our country, Home Hardware is helping you turn a house into a home. Welcome home. For your lawn, your garden, your patio, home has all you need. And more importantly, Welcome home. all the best people. Welcome home. Home of the handyman. What's so special about Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger? Bacon, special sauce, Swiss cheese, more bacon, all on a toasted Kaiser bun. It's the bacon Swiss burger with three strips of bacon. Ooh, doesn't that sound delicious? Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger. Come on in now and grab one while they're hot. Available for a limited time only at Wendy's. It's a friendly family place to shop. Pine Center Mall. The 80 game season setting up these playoff pairings. Rookie coach Pat Burns brought Montreal to a convincing Adams Division title. Buffalo and Hartford battled to the final evening before the Sabres clinched third in a matchup with Boston. Dino delivered for his new employers who surged to the Patrick Division title. Pittsburgh won twice on the final weekend to gain home ice against the Rangers. The Flyers could not rise above fourth and will face Washington. Steve Eiserman soared to 65 goals. Detroit defends its Norris title. St. Louis and Minnesota, they were on the upswing entering the playoffs, while Chicago outlasting Toronto to game four. Joey Mullen celebrated 50 goals and a points record by an American. Calgary is first overall in the NHL. Los Angeles will get home ice over the Oilers, and the Canucks supplanted Winnipeg for the final playoff position. And once again, it took until the final night of the regular season to settle several of the playoff matchups. We're going to take a look at all four divisions, beginning with the Adams. The story there, the fight to avoid finishing fourth and, of course, facing Montreal in the opening round. Speaking of Montreal, let's go to Montreal. More in the Adams division, Dick Irvin. Well, thank you, Brian. And that final night was to decide whether the Hartford Whalers or the Buffalo Sabres would be the team facing the Canadians. As it turned out, it's going to be Hartford. The Hartford Whalers got a big goal-scoring year out of Kevin Denis, but must be considered long shots heading into the playoffs. The Whalers are again counting on the likes of Denis, Ron Francis, and Ray Ferrero to lead a lineup that often in the past has been accused of underachieving. For the first time in a long time, goalie Mike Liut didn't play in 60 or so games. Liut shared duties with rookie Peter Sidorkovitz. The Whalers scored a few more goals this season, but their defense slipped from a year ago. The Buffalo Sabres shook up their roster as the season moved along. The first big move came in November when they traded number one goaltender Tom Barrasso to Pittsburgh in return for highly regarded defenseman Doug Bodger. Then Rick Vive was obtained from Chicago to add scoring punch. Late in the season, defenseman Grant Ledyard and goaltender Clint Malarchuk arrived via Washington. The Sabres are always tough on home ice and in Phil Housley, they have one of this season's outstanding defensemen. The Boston Bruins reached the Stanley Cup Finals last year, then struggled through most of this season to live up to that standard of play. Strangely, the Bruins had a very mediocre record on home ice, although their performance on the road was one of the best. Cam Neely, the team's top scorer, began finding the range only late in the season. Boston sacrificed some defense when they traded Steve Casper to L.A. in return for the much-traveled Bobby Carpenter. Ray Bork, their number one player, missed 20 games because of injury. A healthy Bork and a return to the familiar Boston toughness at playoff time is what is needed for the Bruins to repeat their impressive 1988 postseason performance. There was a new coach in Montreal. Pat Burns had a shaky start, then went on to one of the most successful rookie coaching seasons in league history. The Canadians became the class of the Adams division, playing a solid all-around style that produced a runaway first-place finish. There wasn't a 100-point man in their lineup, but the cliché total team effort applied almost every time they won a game. Chris Chelios was the leader of an outstanding defensive core, and Patrick Waugh emerged as the outstanding individual goaltender in the league. So it's a familiar story out of the Montreal Forum at playoff time. The Canadians have to be considered one of the favorites to win the Stanley Cup.
Dick, Montreal dominated that division to such an extent. Is there a danger to look beyond Hartford? Well, I think that there might be. The Whalers beat them just once, Brian, this year. And in fact, the Canadians lost eight times in the division, four to the Quebec Nordiques, and they're not around. So it's got to be a massive upset if uh, any of the th other three teams in the playoffs in the Adams division prevent Montreal from going through to the conference final. Let's talk about that other series. Buffalo has owned Boston. Uh, how, how do you view that? The Bruins didn't beat the Sabres or the Canadians. Now here, Boston fans are hoping their team can win four games in, what, a week and a half or thereabouts. I'll tell you, if they do, then it's a new season for sure at playoff time. All right, Dick, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you and uh, hearing from you, of course, during the playoffs. We'll take a look at the other divisions uh, as we continue our Stanley Cup preview. Call them superstars, game breakers, or strategic masterminds. They are the main forces who can single-handedly lift their teams from goodness to greatness. We talked with a select circle of a half dozen NHL giants. We introduce them to you now as the men who make a difference. Wayne Gretzky, the bright lights of Hollywood, were a natural location for the NHL's number one luminary. The eight-time Hart Trophy winner as league most valuable player inspired his new teammates to a solid second-place showing in that talented Smythe division. Mario Lemieux ran away from everyone, including Gretzky, in winning his second Art Ross Trophy as the scoring leader. And now the magnificent one has taken the Penguins into postseason play for the first time in seven seasons. Detroit's Stevie Wonder scored the fastest 50 goals in Red Wing history, his second 50-plus campaign. Is there any player more valuable to his team than Iserman? Coach Jacques Demers doesn't think so. Iserman is considered the best of the mere mortals in the NHL. Patrick Waugh from Montreal. He is really the goaltender the Canadians look to at playoff time. Now a three-time Jennings Trophy winner for the least goals allowed, Waugh is unbeaten in a record 29 consecutive starts in Montreal. Marc Messier, the leader of the defending champion Oilers, has really adjusted well to life without Gretzky. Back in 1984, Messier emerged as the leading playoff performer as the Oilers took the first of four Stanley Cups. The four-time, 100-plus point scorer must spearhead the Edmonton attack this spring. Coach Terry Crisp has reason to smile. He sparkled in two seasons with the Flames, twice capturing the President's Trophy as top team. Crisp tasted victory as a member of the Philadelphia Flyers in the 70s and has been a success at every level from junior to the minors and now the NHL. Six men representing six teams considered among the favorites to bring home the Stanley Cup this year. We interview these men that make the difference about a variety of subjects, beginning with pressure and the way it affects them. Well, I think that uh, everyone is the same in that uh, we realize what's at stake, and uh, pressure is what you make of it. And uh, if you let it bother you, then you're in trouble. Uh, if you take the position that you're, you're glad to be there, and you want to be in that position, and you want to be under pressure, then uh, it's a lot easier, and I look at it that way. Pressure's not really the right word. I mean, uh, uh, you get a little more uh, uh, motivated. Uh, it's a little more exciting, and uh, uh, you definitely it's a different, uh, different type of game, a more exciting game and a more intense game, but I don't really think uh, pressure is the right word, not at uh, this early stage of the playoffs. Probably you hope you feel a whole lot of pressure uh, because as coaches and players, that's the time of year you wait for. That's what you play for, and that's why you want to be there. And to me... Pressure makes you play better, makes you react better, makes you think better. So to me, the more pressure, the better off your team should play and you should react. Especially as uh, being as successful as we have in the past, every year seems to be more and more pressure for us to repeat and, and to go on and be as successful as the year has gone by. But um, I think the pressure, in a way, can be uh, good for a hockey team. And I know personally uh, the pressure motivates me even more. And There's going to be a lot of pressure on myself. Uh, Paul Coffey, Dan Quinn, all the veterans that have been in the league for, for a long time. And plus, we didn't make the playoffs for uh, six years. So uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure in Pittsburgh. But uh, uh, all I worry about is go on the ice and do the best I can. Uh, if I do that, I'm going to be happy with myself. Still ahead on Stanley Cup Preview 89, Smythe Trophy winners of the 1980s. And we'll hear from our coach for all seasons, the one and only Don Cherry.
crack open a great light beer. New Foster's Light. It's here, Prince George. Your favorite promotion has returned to CKPG Radio 55. The $100 hit is back. Listen every morning at 8.15 and we'll play the hit of the day. Stay tuned and when you hear that song played again that day, be the 10th caller at 562-9191 and you'll win a $100 bill. It's that easy. We have thousands of dollars to give away. So don't miss your chance to win. The $100 hit on CKPG Radio 55. The spirit of Prince George. It's the famous one cent sale on now at Fabricland. Buy one meter of regular price fabric from our sale selection and get another meter for just one cent. Vogue patterns, our entire regular stock. Buy one, get another for one cent. Penny for your thoughts, but don't think too long. Cotton sportswear sheeting prints. Buy one meter at the regular price and get the second for one cent. Let's all be penny wise and catch these buys. Chambray's, denim, corduroy. Buy one meter at the regular price and get the second for one cent at Fabricland. Fabricland, we'll help you. At C101, we know what you want to hear. Great country music and the sound of money. Listen to C101 for the sound of money between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. weekdays. Be the 10th caller at 564-5878 and win $101 cash. We're giving away thousands of dollars. So keep listening to C101 FM and get ready to win. The sound of money contest could be music to your ears and your wallet. And your country companion, C101. for the emergency lighting here in the Boston Garden. What else could possibly happen? The lights have gone out here in the Boston Garden. That power failure in Boston merely postponing the inevitable for the Edmonton Oilers, who travel back to Alberta to wrap up their fourth cup in five years. Now, with the Oilers dominating the latter portion of the decade, they, of course, have collected their share of Conn Smythe trophies for most valuable player. Here now is a flashback to the winners of the 1980s. Few decades have begun more dramatically than the 80s when Bob Nystrom's overtime goal brought down the Nassau Coliseum and raised the first Stanley Cup toast for the Islanders, led by Brian Trotche. The following year, a late season acquisition, centerman Butch Goring became the key ingredient leading to the Islanders' second cup. Little Butch helped balance the team's offense, making the Isles unstoppable. In 1982, Mike Bossy, the all-time playoff goal-scoring leader with 85, took the Conn Smythe as the New Yorkers downed Vancouver. And in 1983, battling Billy Smith preserved a fourth cup for the New York Islanders while expressing reservations about his popularity. Thank you very much, and all I gotta say is there's probably a lot of people back in Canada will be turning over in their bed with me winning this tonight. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> a new era began in 1984, the Edmonton Oilers' one-two punch of Wayne Gretzky and Marc Messier combined to snap the Islanders' reign at four. Eight goals and 18 assists made Messier the Oilers' first Smythe Trophy winner. But turning the Cup to Alberta in 1985 was as easy as the Stanley Cup record 47 points by Wayne Gretzky. The all-time playoff points leader edging teammate Paul Coffey for the Smythe as the Oilers knocked off Philadelphia in five. Montreal surprised more than a few people in 86, backstopped by Patrick Waugh, who secured 15 victories and the Smythe. Philadelphia's Ron Hextall, the 87 Smythe winner, in spite of playing for the losing team. While Gretzky lengthened his list of records once again last season, scoring 13 points in the final series against Boston, he became only the third player to win the Smythe Trophy more than once. Even MVPs like Wayne Gretzky and the rest, of course, need the support of their friends and teammates to make winning a reality. We asked our current group of key playoff personnel where they look for help when the crunch time comes. I turn to my uh, dad a lot. I think he's been probably the one biggest influence on in my hockey career as a, as a player. He, uh, himself having, having been a player and, uh, and uh, going through the championships and the hard times and the good times, he can uh, recall uh, many of the things that he did and lent them on to me and uh, probably he is the one uh, guy that I turn to the most and uh, he's an unbelievable leader. We had the chance to have a uh, good family parents. They helped me a lot for uh, on the ice and out on the ice and uh, 
I think a great agent. Then uh, if I got something in my mind, he always talk with me and uh, try to uh, find a positive thing. Probably the players. Uh, we like to uh, talk a lot, uh, especially with Paul Coffey. He's the guy that uh, uh, helped me a lot, especially last year and this year. And, and he's probably the guy that uh, I turn to a lot. My wife, but she's not there on the bench with me. She's up in the stands, so I can't use her at that given time. We look for leadership from 20 players dressed. You can't just point the finger and say, this man, this man, this man. We count in our whole bench. So on any given night, uh, I look to any one of my players and say, you better be a leader out there. No one individual can win or lose the Stanley Cup. It takes everyone involved to win. And, uh, boy, I rely on my teammates as, as much as anyone in the league. And I think that the success I've had in my career comes from that, that fact, that I do rely on them so much. Still ahead tonight, remembering those overtime thrillers. And inside the Patrick Division, it's Lemieux Country. What's so special about Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger? Bacon. Special sauce. Swiss cheese. More bacon. All on a toasted Kaiser bun. It's the bacon Swiss burger with three strips of bacon. Ooh, doesn't that sound delicious? Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger. Come on in now and grab one while they're hot. Available for a limited time only at Wendy's. West Coast Amusements is coming back, bringing more fun than ever to the central interior. Don't miss this traveling amusement park when it comes to your town. April 10th through 12th, it'll be at Maple Park Mall in Quinnell. April 11th is pay one price family night, only $13.99, 3 p.m. till closing. Then it's on to Prince George, Vanderhoof, and Fort St. James. Hours of nonstop entertainment sponsored by the BPO Elks Club. West Coast Amusements, coming soon. The next perfect strangers. I think we should get a maid. Of course, and I hardly think getting a young woman to milk a goat is going to solve our problem. <laughs> Thursday at 6 on CKPG TV. Twelve seconds left in the first overtime. And Snaps goes back to the net. Snaps will get rid of it. He did. Mario Lemieux is the scoring champion, did not break the Gretzky records of most goals or most points in a season, but he did come to within one of 200. He is followed by Wayne Gretzky, Stevie Eiserman. Look what Gretzky did for Bernie Nichols after Nichols, a couple of Pittsburgh Penguins, Brown, a forward, and of course their great defenseman, Paul Cuff. All right, a look at the scoring leaders this year in the National Hockey League. Of course, the Art Ross Trophy winner is from the Patrick Division. Here tonight to talk about the Patrick Division is Ron McLean. Ron, good evening. Good evening, Brian. I think you'd agree. It's great the scoring champion is in the postseason this year. Noticeably absent in the Patrick Division are the teams that won the regular season and playoff crowns a year ago. The Devils and Islanders are gone, so here's the book on the four teams remaining in the hunt for the Patrick crown in the playoffs this season. Washington Capitals feel the deal to acquire Dino Cicerelli will secure their future. Cicerelli, coupled with another newcomer, Jeff Cortnell, gives the Caps 240 goal men and two solid power play units. Their defense is the best in the division and now uses six regulars instead of four. Rod Langway has a new partner this year. Teamed with Neil Sheehy, the veteran pairing has been outstanding. The players respect Brian Murray, who has experience in management's unwavering support. And in goal, Pete Peters has sizzled. He won the Vesna Trophy in 1983. 
The Pittsburgh Penguins possess the two best players in the Patrick division. Mario Lemieux makes his postseason debut. While for Paul Coffey, the Stanley Cup has a familiar ring. The Penguins had the most productive power play in history this year, but also set a record for penalties, a propensity which must be eliminated, or the Pens will be too. Gene Ubriaco is a rookie at this level. There have been whispers concerning his work under pressure, but Tom Barrasso should calm his coach, the type of goaltending that earned him the Vesna Trophy in 1984. If the New York Rangers are to end a 49-year Stanley Cup drought, they must look to Rookie of the Year candidate Brian Leach, who has tremendous skills, but not necessarily the size to match. The Rangers are small, but check better than any team in the Patrick, owing to great team speed. Jan Eriksson's a relentless shadow, but has been bothered recently by a bad back, and that's the key for New York. Sick Bay has been overcrowded on Broadway, and the Rangers have to get healthy. Bill Esposito is squarely on the hot seat behind the bench, and in goal is John Van Beesbrook, winner of the Vesna Trophy in 1986. Finally, there's Philadelphia, the only place in the east outside of Atlantic City with a slot machine, namely Tim Kerr. Along with Rick Tockett's career year, the Philadelphia Flyers have scoring and stature. The spectrum can still be a miserable setting for opponents when the Flyers get physical. Philadelphia must hope Mark Howe's effective playing with a knee brace. He's the mainstay of a defense in transition. Paul Holmgren's in his first year as head coach, but was an assistant under Keenan for three years, so experience is not a problem. Nor is goaltending for the Flyers with Ron Hextall, the winner of the Vesna Trophy in 1987. Ron Hextall is going to have to be sensational in goal in the Patrick Division. Before talking about the Flyers, Ron, how about the Capitals? Is this finally Washington's year? I believe so, Brian. You know, as late as the 1st of March, it looked like it was a toss-up in the Patrick Division, but suddenly the Capitals got hot and everybody else uh, was not. The Caps won eight in a row to clinch their division. They've got Dino Cicerelli scoring. Dale Hunter, since the All-Star break, is playing his best hockey as a Capital, and Brian Murray's now the only coach with experience really behind the bench and that should give the Caps an edge. All right, Rangers and Pittsburgh. What about the Bergeron firing? What does that do to New York? I think it'll have a profound effect on the Rangers. Their only bad month was March, and they did that without their key defenseman in the lineup. They liked Michel Bergeron. They like Phil Esposito, too, but he's the manager, and that's added pressure I don't think they need right now. Can Lemieux carry Pittsburgh past New York? He's the key, but endurance is, too. Lemieux can play 40 minutes a night, and one wonders if teams can shadow Lemieux with the heavy schedule that they incur in the playoffs. All right, Ron, we'll check back with you again in just a few minutes. Don Cherry will join Ron for some final thoughts here this evening. Ron McLean, of course, well remembers that first-round playoff game in the Patrick Division two years ago, decided by Pat LaFontaine's overtime goal. It came in the fourth overtime period. That goal is included in our overtime package. Here's how some of the playoffs' classic goals looked and sounded. On the face-off, out to Carl Brewer. A long backhand is wide. Langwash hits it off the board. Bob Bond lets it drive. It goes, go! Tried a shot that was wide and keen and cleared it, but not out. Bobby Orr behind the net to Sanderson. Oh! believe what is happening tonight but that's all in the past it's new now next goal will win it there's a shot the Los Angeles Kings ladies and gentlemen have fashioned here tonight the greatest comeback that I can remember in Stanley Cup play overtime in a 15 Maloney in front Billy Smith Rob Brook robbed him Bossy played it in. That's Tonelli going after it. Into the corner, Patey lost it. Sutter! Picked out by Glenn Hamlin. Shot, score! The Islanders have done it. The Islanders scoring a goal. 
to beat the Rangers in New York. So anything can happen early here. From the faceoff, McPhee brings it in with Scrooge. And he scores! On the goal, Deneen out front shoots, hit a stick. Comes to the line. LaFontaine shot. He scores! LaFontaine at the blue line here in the fourth overtime. Firing the shot and winning the series. And CBC Sports special Stanley Cup preview will continue right after this. The time to buy GM is right now. Because until midnight, April 8th, GMAC will finance all GM cars and compact trucks at an unbelievable rate of 9.9% on approved credit. It's an incredible deal from General Motors. 9.9% financing for up to 48 months. But time is running out, so see your GM dealer for full details. At 9.9%, the time to buy GM is right now. It's the famous one cent sale on now at Fabricland. Buy one meter of regular price fabric from our sales selection and get another meter for just one cent. Vogue patterns our entire regular stock. Buy one, get another for one cent. Penny for your thoughts, but don't think too long. Cotton sportswear sheeting prints. Buy one meter at the regular price and get the second for one cent. Let's all be penny wise and catch these buys. Chambray's denim corduroy. Buy one meter at the regular price and get the second for one cent at Fabricland. Fabricland, we'll help you make it rich. World-class rockers together on the Rock Album. From Boston to Kansas. This is Hot Rocket. The Rock Album. Melt it down. The Super Rockers. On the Rock Album. Hot Rocket from Quality Records and it's in stores now. At C101, we know what you want to hear. Great country music and the sound of money. Listen to C101 for the sound of money between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. weekdays. Be the 10th caller at 564-5878 and win $101 cash. We're giving away thousands of dollars. So keep listening to C101 FM and get ready to win. The sound of money contest could be music to your ears and your wallet. And your country companion, C101. on your own goaltender probably tops the list of nightmares that a hockey player encounters. A very lonely feeling when you are forced to handle such responsibility. Responsibility is something our superstars live with on a daily basis, and we wonder just how they do it. Boy, that's a heavy, heavy duty one that one is. Uh, I want to renegotiate my contract before we go any further on this one, I'll tell you. Coaches accept that. That's part of your job, part of what you're expected to do, and you're supposed to have all the answers, and if you give the players the answers and they go out in the ice and do it, you look like a genius. If they don't, you're the dummy, you accept it, get on with your job. I kind of disagree with the people who say that uh, uh, as I go, the team goes, because they'll, they'll find you know, it'll be very evident and more so in the playoffs when, when these players come up uh, and do uh, big things for us. You're the hero if you win and you're the goat if you lose. and It's something that I've been used to my whole career, so it's not something that's new for me. And uh, I've been used to it before, so... Again, it goes along with the pressure. I want to be there and I want to be involved and I like to feel that kind of pressure. I like to be there. I think you got to come to the rink and know that if you don't play a good game uh, on any certain given night that your team had, doesn't have as good a chance as winning. And um, I think uh, when teams are successful, every, t every player has that feeling in the back of their minds that they're the one that could be the difference. I've had uh, a lot of flowers thrown at me, uh, a lot of awards thrown my way, and I've also taking a lot of heat, and uh, you got to be able to handle both parts of it. And I think I've handled both parts of it through my career, and I'm I'm not about to worry about it now. <laughs> oh, look at this! Roger Nielsen has a towel. He's waving the white flag.
From the terrible towels which Don Whitman described, our next stop brings us to the terrible division in the NHL, the Norris, four out of five teams below 500. Don Whitman, since your home city of Winnipeg is on the sidelines, we have turned over the Norris division to you. Yes, Brian, thanks a lot. I'm forever indebted. But the Norris division did have the most drama in the National Hockey League as the Chicago Blackhawks did not win the final playoff berth until the final game of the season, and then they had to go into overtime to do it. The Chicago Blackhawks last won the Stanley Cup in 1961, and the prospects of them ending that 28-year drought this year don't look particularly good. The 1989 Blackhawks have staggered into the playoffs, and to advance, they'll need stellar performances from players like Dennis Savard, who can dominate a game when right. Plagued by goaltending problems, the Hawks acquired Elaine Chevrier from Winnipeg, and he now is firmly established as the team's number one goaltender, but he lacks playoff experience. Mike Keenan's coaching techniques didn't go over well with some players, and while Keenan has vowed to rebuild the Hawks, the process is far from complete. The Minnesota North Stars last played in the Stanley Cup Final in 1981, losing to the New York Islanders in five games. Now, after missing the playoffs for the past two seasons, they are the new-look North Stars. Just prior to the trade deadline, they obtained Mike Gartner from the Washington Capitals, along with defenseman Larry Murphy. Defensively, the North Stars are respectable, if not solid, but goaltenders John Casey and Kerry Tackle lack playoff experience. Rookie head coach Pierre Paget got the North Stars into the playoffs this season, and he may have to be satisfied with that. In the first three years of their existence, the St. Louis Blues played in the Stanley Cup Final, but they lost each time in four straight games. If they're to advance that far this year, Greg Millen, who led the league in shutouts, will have to be at his best. Offensively, the St. Louis Blues are one of the lowest scoring teams in the league, and only Brett Hull can be considered a potent goal scoring threat. Brian Sutter is the youngest head coach in the league, but at times this year, he agonized and aged over his team's play. The Detroit Red Wings last won a Stanley Cup in 1955, but once again, the Red Wings are among the upper echelon of NHL teams, having won their second straight Norris Division Championship. Steve Eiserman is the heart and soul of the Red Wings. He is a game breaker, and Stevie Y is a serious contender for the Hart Trophy as the league's most valuable player. On the blue line, Steve Chason is in his first full season, but he's developed into a team leader and has become a key component of the Wings' power play. The goaltending duo of Greg Steffen and Glenn Hanlon have alternately shone in past playoff action. It hasn't been an easy year for coach Jacques Demers dealing with numerous off-ice problems, but through it all, he remains optimistic. We consider ourselves in a pool of five or six teams that are capable of winning in a Stanley Cup. We're going to take a shot at it. We've been there the last two years in the Final Four, come very close, not close enough, and hopefully that we have learned something that we'll be able to go on into a final, and who knows what can happen in the final. Shock to Mayor's team losing on Sunday night, so no team in the Norris division finishes with a winning record. Don, the Chicago Blackhawks have got no business at all in the playoffs with the kind of season they've had. They're in the playoffs. What about Chicago-Detroit? Well, Brian, I think they're going to give the Red Wings a tough time during regular season play. They were dead even. Three wins, three losses, and two ties. I think Jacques Demers might have preferred to play Toronto. They had a winning record against the Leafs, five and three. What about Minnesota-St. Louis? Well, in the month of February, the St. Louis Blues struggled. They lost seven consecutive games, but they've been one of the hot teams over the last six weeks. Their record in the last 18 games, 12 wins, four losses, and two ties. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see St. Louis emerge as champions of the Norris Division. All right, Don, you're next on the line. Thanks for joining us. We'll hear from you in the weeks to come. Up next on Stanley Cup Preview 89, it's the Smythe Division plus a visit with Ron McLean and Don Cherry.
The winning edge, you'll get it at ENI Sports Racket Center. For the novice, intermediate, or expert player, no matter what your sport, ENI has the equipment, rackets, and accessories to give you the winning edge. Check ENI's selection of squash, badminton, racquetball, and tennis equipment, backed by expert service people who will help you make the buying decision that's right for you. That's the winning edge. Get it at ENI Sports. Next time, on an all-new episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, Picard's identical twin from the future traps the crew in a deadly time warp. The Enterprise was destroyed three hours and 19 minutes from now. We can't escape. We can't go forward. No. Now, can they stop their own destruction? I can't hold it any longer. It's a desperate fight to escape annihilation on the next all-new episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Friday night at 6 on CKPG-TV. Auto insurance can be confusing. Bartons has the people who understand, assessing your requirements quickly with computer access to all necessary records. Karina Mueller will help you determine your coverage needs and rating options. Brenda Rutko handles fleets plus the complexities of garage policies and commercial autos. Barb Goudridge, an insurance professional with the experience to handle all your auto plan requirements. So don't be confused. See the friendly people who understand at Barton Insurance. Brent Sutter had it knocked away at the blue line. Wheeling away is Messier. Messier, beautiful! Goal! Let's go! It was 1984 when Edmonton ended the Islanders' drive for five. Mark Messier, one of the heroes who launched the start of the Oilers' reign of power in the NHL. Edmonton's Chris Cuthbert has seen the Oilers' power firsthand over the years. He joins us tonight with a rather impossible mission. That is handicapping that Smythe division. Good day, Mr. Phelps. The Stanley Cup playoffs are upon us. When players put on their game face, tempers are shorter and the shadows grow longer. The Calgary Flames were the class of the Smythe division during the regular season, giving coach Terry Crisp many reasons to smile. The Flames are led by the St. Louis Connection. There are six former Blues, including center Doug Gilmore and right winger Joey Mullen, enjoying his finest season ever. Last year, he was Joe Who, but Joe Neuendijk isn't a secret agent any longer, scoring 50 goals for the second straight year. The Flames' leader is a man on a mission. Lanny McDonald scored his 500th goal and 1,000th point this year. All that's left is a Stanley Cup to cap his career. The Vancouver Canucks are the surprise team of the Smythe Division, an organization that has never had an individual award winner, could have two this season. Rookie of the Year candidate Trevor Linden, codenamed the franchise, and Coach of the Year contender Bob McCammon. Paul Reinhardt has brought playoff experience from Calgary. Petri Skrico provides scoring finish. And Kirk McLean and Steve Weeks have backstopped the Canucks to the league's third best defensive record. This club should not be underestimated. The Los Angeles Kings are the high rollers from the West Coast. Agent 99 has whet the Kings' appetite for winning. Always dangerous on the ice, Gretzky is also engaged in a war of propaganda with his old colleagues prior to the playoffs. Gretzky is surrounded with talent, including the explosive Bernie Nichols and goaltender Kelly Rudy, brought in from the East Coast with the playoffs in mind. This is not a team to mess with. The result could be gang warfare, but rumored infighting with their leader could be a weakness. You are familiar with the Edmonton Oilers, long the class of the Smythe, but this picture was altered dramatically this season. Still, Oilers kingpin Glenn Sather has many weapons at his disposal. Grant Fuhrer is the NHL's best money goaltender. Mark Messier is a fearless leader without peer. Essa Tikkanen is one of the league's least liked but most appreciated defensive specialists, while compatriot Yari Curry is an offensive sharpshooter. Their tradition of winning should not be discounted. Your assignment, Jim, should you choose to accept it, is to determine the Smythe winner in 89. Time is at a premium. The office hockey pool is tomorrow. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds.
right, that tape is self-destructed. I'm happy to tell you, though, Chris Cuthbert has not. Uh, the Kings and the Oilers. Chris, what effect have the Gretzky statements, the criticisms of Sather and Pocklington had? There's been a lot of talk here in the last couple of weeks, Brian, but it's hard to determine whether or not it will affect the series. Mark Messier has said he thinks the whole thing's been blown out of proportion, but there is a chance that the wounds that were opened with the trade on August 9th have been reopened at the worst possible time. Wayne Gretzky says he's never been more ready for a playoff series, and that means the Kings could provide an upset. All right, how about Calgary-Vancouver? Flames are the best team, but I think a lot of people are surprised that the Canucks are the third best team defensively. A lot of opposing teams have come into Edmonton after playing on the West Coast and told us that they felt Vancouver could provide an upset in the first round. I still think the Calgary Flames are the team to beat, especially if they get the goaltending from Mike Vernon. They obviously have been the power in the Smite division this year. All right, Chris, thank you for joining us tonight from Edmonton. We will talk with you in the weeks to come. We have looked at the players from the four divisions tonight, but let's not forget the coaches. NHL history is filled with the great ones from Half Day to Tommy Ivan. Here are some others whose exploits fill the record books. Dick Irvin Sr. led the Canadians for 14 years during the heyday of Rocket Richard, setting a record for playoff appearances. Back in the 1930s, one of the game's early builders, Jack Adams, was manager coach of back-to-back -back Detroit champions. Hector Toblake masterminded the Habs to eight Stanley Cups, including a record five consecutive wins to close out the 50s. While the 60s belonged to George Punch and Lack and the Maple Leafs, who got unexpected mileage out of a veteran crew to triumph four times, the last being in 1967. The first expansion team to win the Cup was Philadelphia. As Fred Shiro was surely a man ahead of his time, the Flyers winning in 74 and 75. Scotty Bowman, leader in all-time playoff wins, collected five Cups with the Canadians, all in the 70s, including four in a row to close out the decade. Al Arbor performed behind the bench for the Islanders in the 80s, matching Montreal's feat of four consecutive Stanley Cups. And feisty Glenn Sather, the coach with the best winning percentage in playoff history, brought the Edmonton Oilers four Cups in a five-year span. But this year, his troops are facing a new challenge as they enter the playoffs as underdogs. And on that note, we welcome a pair of veterans known for their teamwork, Ron McLean and Don Cherry. Listen, Ron has talked about Michelle Bergeron's firing, the effect on the Ranger players. I'm wondering, has Esposito slit his throat firing Bergeron? No, well, they, listen, they were both going to go after next year if they didn't do something anyhow. And uh, Phil got booed the last game. He figures it this way. Look, if, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go out coaching my way. And that's the way it goes. He never liked Bergeron right from the start. He gave up the number one draft choice and $100,000 and they, uh, they just didn't mix. So he's gone. Michel Mobel is gone. Would they have gone anywhere with Bergeron behind the bench? Absolutely. He's a good coach. And uh, Brian Murray has the ticket now because he's the only coach that knows how to handle the teams he's got because the others are uh, rookies, or in this case, Esposito hasn't been behind the bench for a while. Well, I don't know, but I'm just saying he's got a lot of guts doing it. I tell you, he's... he's, he's, he's you, like his the, life. you like the call? You like firing Bergeron with two games to go in the race? No, I don't like it. I wouldn't have done it, but like I said, he, they were going to go both anyhow, and Phil thinks he's a good coach. All right, in the, Patrick, he did do good. in the Patrick division, I should tell our viewers, I heard something the other night, I think it was last Thursday night, I never thought I'd hear, Don Cherry defending the player he once called a floater, namely Mario Lemieux. Three years ago, he was the biggest floater ever in hockey. He went to the Canada Cup. He saw Gretzky show up every night. He got it in his head. That's what you got to be to a superstar. And that's what he's done. I calls him the way I sees him. He works now. That's the way it should be. But they're not going anywhere or anyhow with the way Barras is playing. And Wendell Young, he gets four goals the other night. And Barrasso lets in nine. Barrasso has a bad shoulder. And I don't that's care. A question mark. If he can play healthy, he'll be fine. They won't yeah. have a problem in goal. Three games ago, he let... Oh, they won't have a problem? Not Remember this. Barrasso. Remember this. Ronnie, you think Lemieux's finally going to prove himself in the playoffs? I think Lemieux has a real good opportunity because the Rangers will struggle without Bergeron behind the bench, and he'll get a chance to warm up. And he plays a lot, and I don't think that Erickson or Debloat can handle playing 40 minutes a night. Erickson's hurt, too. All right, Erickson's one fellow that has proved himself in the playoffs is Gretzky. What about Gretzky's tirade against Sather and Pocklington? <clears throat> Any effect at all? Well, yeah. Yeah, I think he's thrown. I think he's thrown off the team a little. He goes and golfs with them right after that. But the question is, is Fior, uh, 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 their goaltender, is he going to be as good? The defense, low, is he going to be? Messier, Anderson, do they want to beat L.A. as much as Gretzky 
wants to beat Sather. Or maybe more important, Don, the big six has always been the key for the Oilers, and the big six is not what it used to be without Wayne Gretzky. In fact, Calgary will tell you the reason they lost last year uh, wasn't Fuhrer as good as he was. It was Gretzky. All right. When he plays, possessed. With Fuhrer. Just a couple of seconds. Chicago's got no business in the playoffs. Are you still going to tell me this is a good playoff structure? There shouldn't... There should be this many teams. I'm going to tell you that both of these teams and the crowds and their fans would have been out of it by Christmas if they didn't have it set up the way it so was. That's, uh, that last game was as exciting as you're going to see in the playoffs mediocre. and everything. I don't care. It was a pretty good game. If you're with Chicago, they went nuts. There was 20,000 people going nuts there. I like it the way it is now, and that's the way it should be. 16 teams in the league. It may not be great in the regular season, but it'll be great in the playoffs if all of a sudden a team that shows up like Chicago does in the last game suddenly goes on. It happened with the right, New Jersey Devils I, I in the same think, building. All right, I still think too many teams in the playoffs. Well, all I right, agree with that. Very quickly, some predictions. Calgary going to be there? I can't make a prediction. I wouldn't bet against the Flames or the Canadians. I like his dark horses, the Capitals and the Kings. How about you? Fence sitter, all eh? Right. All You're the way. not a fencer. Well, I, I must be out of my mind, but I'm going to say uh, Canadians at Edmonton. I, I know I can hear myself going into the finals now, Calgary. They're all booing me again, but I'm not going to bet against Sather and Fuhr. All right, the Soviet player will be here next year. Sergio, if uh, Calgary doesn't win it, Sergio <laughs> and Fletcher are going back to Russia. All right. When our playoff preview continues, Don and Ron, we'll see and hear from you in the weeks to come. We'll hear from some of the key people who could make the difference in postseason play. Stay with us. We'll be right back. That's Sergei. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's a tragic fact that drinking drivers leave Mrs. victims Marsh, behind. I'm very sorry. Each year in British Columbia, drinking drivers kill an average of 200 persons and injure 7,000. Oh, and God. behind each statistic are countless human tragedies. Jack... Most drinking drivers' victims are their own passengers. Don't ride with a drinking driver. You have everything to lose. What's so special about Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger? Bacon. Special sauce. Swiss cheese. More bacon. All on a toasted Kaiser bun. It's the bacon Swiss burger with three strips of bacon. Ooh, doesn't that sound delicious? Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger. Come on in now and grab one while they're hot. Available for a limited time only at Wendy's. The next CKPG-TV Chamber of Commerce luncheon will be held this coming Wednesday at the Coast Inn of the North. The guest speaker will be Mr. Ronald Lawless, President and CEO of Canadian National Railways. Mr. Lawless has been with CN since 1941 and has served in many positions in the corporation. Mr. Lawless was also named Canada's Transportation Man of the Year in 1986. Mr. Ronald Lawless, the next guest speaker at the CKPG-TV Chamber of Commerce Luncheon. Pardon me, ma'am, but it looks like you need some new carpeting in this room. <laughs> What's that you say, sir? You're a do-it-yourselfer? I remember what happened last time. The professionals at the Carpet Corral take care of the job from start to finish. Free estimates with no obligation and financing is available. The Carpet Corral, now located at 1586 Ogilvy. Stanley Cup Preview 89, brought to you by Molson Export. Nothing halfway about it. X says it all. By Ford of Canada, where quality is more than a commitment, quality is job one. And by Esso retailers and agents across Canada. So the stage is all set. The playoffs open on eight fronts tomorrow night. Our final question to our select six hockey spokesman, what are the things that make the playoffs special? It's going to be special because it's the first time in, uh, in my career, NHL career, that uh, I'm going to be in the playoffs. And just the excitement of the fans, the media, the players, and uh, a challenge to get to the final and get the Stanley Cup is, is uh, something that is special. The pressure, I think... Uh... You know, every game it's uh, it's really important. Uh, a loss in a game uh, could be a series, and uh, I think when you go in the game, it's all and the, the fans make it too special because uh, they cheer and it's the fever. The hockey world, more so than during the definitely more so during the uh, during the regular season, uh, is really focused in on the playoffs and and your games usually televised every night and. Uh, you know, the whole hockey world is watching and it's so much excitement and that really uh, makes it a thrill. 
Probably the one thing that makes playoffs special is it's a short burst. Uh, you're coming in here, you know you've got X amount of games to play, X amount of time to do it in, and it's the hype and it's the time of year that the, the 80 games that are dragged on are gone by you. Now every night is a gung-ho night. Every night is almost a do-or-die night. And every night is circus night. Get at it and get on with it. You win, you go on, and the hype builds. You lose, you go and pout and hide somewhere for two months. Winning, that's, that's uh, the thing that's been the greatest thrill for me over the years in, in, the, in the playoffs is winning. Uh, there's no feeling uh, and no words to describe the feeling that when you've played a year with 80 games, 10 exhibition games, and, and depending on how the series go, uh, but uh, as many as 20 playoff games, uh, uh, the feeling that you get when it's all over and you are the champions, there's, uh, there's no other feeling like winning. The end result, the, the, you know, to realize, to sacrifice, uh, and the sacrifices you make, the reward at the end is so great because there's no feeling like lifting the Stanley Cup. In the Adams Division, Montreal, and this game will be shown, the series will be shown on Hockey Night in Canada, opens at home tomorrow night against the Hartford Whalers. In the other series, Buffalo Sabres, they have owned the Bruins all season, they will open in Boston. In the Patrick Division, first place Washington has the home ice advantage with the fourth place Philadelphia Flyers, Mario Lemieux, and the Pittsburgh Penguins hosting the Rangers, and their new head coach, Phil Esposito. In the Norris at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, it will be Detroit and Chicago. And in the other series in that division, in St. Louis, the Blues home to Minnesota. In the Smythe division, both series will be shown on Hockey Night in Canada. Calgary is home to the Vancouver Canucks. And of course, the series really with the most interest, the Edmonton Oilers are on the road to open against Wayne Gretzky and the Kings at the Forum in Los Angeles. That's it, the Stanley Cup, that cherished piece of silverware. That's what they're all playing for. The new season begins tomorrow night, and you, of course, can see it right here on CBC. Hope you enjoyed the show tonight. I'm Brian Williams. Good night from CBC Sports. The head of CBC Network Sports is Arthur Smith. The executive producer for the NHL preview show is Doug Sellers. Program manager, Jane Shorts. Stanley Cup 89 preview produced by Steve Lansky and Don Pepin. Our associate producer has been Joel Darling. Our writer and researcher, Mike Dennis. <laughs>